Okay, guys, last thing I'm going to show you is uh, if you put the, the voltage, the 2 8 that we have in the shop, to the wrong terminals of the other transformer. So, right now I have the 2 8 going to the common and the 2 8 volt up, and we can now see that there is 208 volts there. A little low because the voltage coming in the shop is low. If we take it the common to the 600, come on, buddy. Breaker's tired today. Okay, that voltage is 600 volts. Okay, so that's the appropriate voltage that we're looking for. If I mistake, I took that 28 and put it to the 240 volt tap. Well, then I've reduced the voltage right across. I've changed the volts per turn ratio. Okay, so now instead of seeing the 600 volts, I'm down to 500. Right? The ratio has now changed on all of the windings of the entire transformer. Okay? If I take a look at uh, the voltage now between here and the 120, well, we'll see that that voltage has been reduced as well down to 100 volts because the ratio between 28 and 240 is now seen between 120 and the 100 volts that's available. Now. Okay? So putting the voltage to the wrong terminal is going to change everything on the transformer. If I put 28 into 600 volts, I've now changed everything, and I only have now 40 volts available between the common and the 120 because I put 28 across a whole whack of turns between the common and the 600. I've changed the ratio of volts per turn for the entire transformer, and now I have a much lower voltage available between the common and the 120. If we bring this back to feeding the common and the 28, there's our 120 available. Okay, so make sure that you put the right voltage to the right terminals. Now, some of you guys will want to be donkeys. As much as I tell you not to do this, you will try to take the 28 volt feed and you will feed the 120. That voltage, the 28 going to the 120, is now across fewer turns. You've now upped the voltage per turn, so volts per turn ratio for the entire transformer. So now between the common and the 600 volt turn, you'll see that ratio of increase between 28 and 120, which we know is 1.32 or root three. So now that I've put this larger voltage across a smaller amount of turns, and I screwed up the connection, the 600 volts will now be 600 times root three or 1,038 volts. Okay, I would not suggest this whatsoever. I'm just showing you this in the shop just to show you what happens. And this is one of the reasons why these breakers are so tired is because you're putting a voltage across fewer turns. You have less impedance than you do between the common and the 208. So it would not be a good idea in the shop to put yourself into a cir circuit and start taking readings on 1,038 volts. But let's see what happens when we turn on the breaker. So you can hear it consistently tripping. Okay, as try as I might, I cannot get this breaker to hold. Okay, you can actually see the, I don't know if you can make it out, but the wires are actually jumping a touch um, as I'm trying to close this breaker. Because there is less impedance there, there's no way that that breaker is going to hold. Less impedance means more current, and it's consistently having more current than what the breaker is rated for. So don't be a donkey and put the 28 to the 120. That's gonna give you 1,038 volts and somebody's gonna get hurt. Take that voltage in the shop, put it to the appropriate terminals, and then turn it on. Now, I've turned this on so many times that it's probably overheated the breaker now. Let's see if it holds, there we go. Now it's holding, okay? So the 28 to the appropriate turns, and then between the common and the 600, or the common and the 480, or the common and the 450, we'll see the appropriate voltage. Don't be a donkey. Thank you.